conceive on me through their word, through their word. I thank God that Jesus prayed for us. That, that verse there means that he was actually praying for us. Those of us that would believe on him through the word of the disciples, the word that the apostles preached. Amen? That they all may be one. This is important. That they all, who is he talking about? Who is the all here? The church, the saints of God, the sons of God. As thou, Father, art in me. This is how the oneness is supposed to take place. As thou, Father, art in me. In other words, I'm the example. Jesus is saying he's the example. Just as you are in me and I am in you, that they also may be one in us. You see that? That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. In other words, except there be a manifestation of Christ in the earth, inside of us, or in us and, and we being inside of him, the world will never believe that he came because the world will never see him. Come on, are you working with me? The world will never see him. There has to be a manifestation of that oneness. And he's saying at the top of this verse that he is the example. Just as you're in me and I'm in you, we're going to be in them and they're going to be in us. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Just as. Just as. There's no difference. That's important. There's no difference in what God has done in us than what he did in Jesus. That man called Jesus Christ. There's absolutely no difference in what God has done in us and what God did in him. That's important. You must believe that. You must believe that. If you're ever going to achieve holiness, you must believe that. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. And the glory which thou gave them, the 22nd verse, I have, the, the glory which you gave me, rather, I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. What is that glory? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Exactly. The, that's the glory that God gave the man Jesus. He gave him the Holy Ghost. He gave him the Holy Ghost. 23rd verse says, I in them, he's explaining that oneness, uh, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect. How? Perfect in one. You know, Jesus is really saying here, there's no way that you can be in God and not be perfect. Hello. Those who are placed in God are perfect. He's a perfect God. I say he's a perfect God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We are able to walk in that perfection. And that the world may know that thou has sent me. That the world may know that thou has sent me and has loved them as thou has loved me. Now notice what he continues <clears throat> Notice what he continues to, to say here. Notice what he continues to say here. He continues to allude to the fact that the oneness, the, the manifestation of Christ in the church, that manifestation of him being in the church is what is going to cause the world to know that Jesus did come. Amen. But I want you to see it. Thank you. Just put it right here. Thank you. I want you to see it. You don't mind if I sit, do you? Praise the Lord. Um, I want you to see it from the perspective in which it was intended. He's, he's continuing to say that if you make them one, as we are one, just, just as I am, then the world will know you sent me. Now that sounds as if he's talking, he's, he's, he's talking about the world will know that, you know, it's, 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 um, it's 2014, the world will know that back in uh, AD 4 that Jesus came to the world. That's not the only thing he's talking about. He's not, he's not talking about the world will know that I did come and walk the earth for 33 and a half years and did die and crucified and all of that. That's not the only thing he's talking about here. He's saying that the oneness, that if you make them one, that they will 
that the world will be able to see me again. The world will see me in them. I think this is a little shaky. <laughs> He's saying that the world will be able to, to see him walk the earth. And the world will know that you sent me. The world will know that I'm here. That I'm in the world. That you sent me to the world. Are you hearing God? So he's not just alluding to the fact that he came 2,000 years ago. He's saying that when, the, when, when, when you manifest that oneness with Christ, now the world know Christ is here. The world know he came. Because they see him again in you. Are, are you hearing God? They actually see him in us. Are you working with God? Are you working with God? Amen. Amen. That's very important. It's very important that we, that we hear this. I told you the New Testament is going to read differently now. Amen. Because God has given us tremendous increase here. Amen. Notice what he said. Uh, in the, we just read the 23rd verse. Father, I will... That they also, now this is also very important. I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. Wow. First, I want you to give them the glory that you gave me. Give them the Holy Spirit. Give them, give them the Holy Spirit. Give them that same glory. But, Father, I got another request. I want them to be with me. The ones that, are, that you're truly giving to me, I want them to be with me. Why? Where I am. I want them to be wherever I am. I want them to be there. That they may do what? Behold my glory. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which thou has given me. I want them to see. I want them to be right there. To behold the glory that you have given me. Oh saints. This, 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 this salvation. Is a marvelous work. Amen. This thing that God has done through Jesus Christ. Is a marvelous work. Glory to God. And it's a work that only God could have done. Only God could have pulled this off. Amen. He said, I want that this was so important when God revealed this to me and when, I, when he made me see what he was really talking about. I'm like, what? Glory to God. He says, I want them to be where I am so that they can behold my glory. The glory that you're going to give me. Notice what Jesus said in, in, in 17 and 1. He said, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, that I was come, glorify thy son that thy son may also glorify you. Now watch this. As thou hast given him power over all flesh. That he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Now let's make the connection between this verse and verse 24. The second, the uh, St. John 17 and 2 and St. John 17, 24. Let's make this connection here. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. Now notice what the, the first verse says. St. John 17 and 1. Says, the hour has come. He lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son, that thy son may also glorify thee. Now look at the fifth verse. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with what? Amen. Thine own self with the glory which I had with thee when? Before the world was. Give me the glory. Now this is the man Jesus in the garden pr praying. He said, Father, give me the glory that I had with you before the world was. So before Jesus came, what was he? It was the word. He was the word made flesh. He was, he was a person of the Godhead, wasn't he? Yes. Amen. And God is a what? 
spirit. He's an omnipresent spirit. Is that right? Glory to God. And Jesus said, I want that glory. I want the glory that I had before the world was. I want the glory. I want you to give me the glory that I had with you before you ever made the world. So where was he? He was with the Father. The Word was God and the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. So he said, give me that glory. Glorify me with your own self. So <clears throat> where can the fullness of God be seen? In the Holy Ghost. The fullness of God, the Spirit of God. That's, that's where you see the fullness of the Godhead bodily is inside of the Holy Spirit. The Father and the Son is in the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing God? Amen. So wherever the Holy Spirit is, that's the Father and the Son. Are you hearing me? So Jesus is saying, give me that glory. Now, notice now, we're talking about a man. I want, I want you to really see this. I want to put these two together, so these two verses together, so you can really see Amen. From the father's perspective, you know why the scripture says that we are the workmanship of the father. Amen. Amen? Glory to God. Um, give me a, a male portrait. Do I have a male portrait here? Uh, come, come here, Xavier. Amen. Glory to God. And I need some other male portraits. Do we have some male portraits? Where are they? Hiding. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Xavier, you got the, you got the, the awesome extinction, distinction of being Jesus. <laughs> oh, are you sticking chest out now? <laughs> A little bird chest. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So here's Jesus now in the garden praying, right? This is a man that is praying to his father. And notice what he's asking for. He says, Father, glorify me with the glory that I had with you. Remember Jesus was standing before Pilate. And uh, no, when um, Peter knows he was with his disciples and, and Peter wanted to cut off the man's ear and all that stuff. And Jesus said, you know what? If I, if I needed help, I could call my father and he would do what? Send me what? Twelve legions of angels. Notice what he said, though. If I needed help, I could call my father, and my father would send me twelve legions of angels. My, and then he said, if I needed help, my angels would fight for me. They would fight for me. The people in my kingdom would fight for me. Right? I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this is the words of a man, the man Jesus, talking to his father. Right? So what makes this the man Jesus? God was in this man, right? Hello? Yeah. The Holy Ghost was in this man. Notice what the scripture says. Satan t told Jesus, said now, hallelujah. Satan said to Jesus, he said, jump off this cliff. Because, you know, your father has given the angels charge over you. Charge over you. So that you can't even dash your foot against a stone so what is he what is he alluding to this man jesus can't be hurt until the time Amen. nothing can hurt this man what is he saying the angels are seeing to it that nothing hurts this body Amen. your daddy has given the angels charge and 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 nothing can 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 destroy you nothing can touch you you can't even stump your toe glory to god because the father is protecting you because you're in this body see he's in this body are you hearing God he's in this body where is he in this body how is it <clears throat> what, what, uh, what? <clears throat> let's look at this body this man Jesus what was so unique about him that was different from everybody else in the world I mean he was a man he was a man, right? I want you to see something here. Because God wants to tie up all loose ends here. He's not leaving anything. <clears throat> he was a man. However, remember when Mary 
when the angel came to Mary and told she was going to have a baby. But the Bible says the Holy Ghost did what? Overshadowed her. What was the purpose of that overshadowing? Mary was born in sin, shaped in iniquity, right? Amen. So she, she had inherited Adam's sin. If, if she's going to supply, because remember now, the only thing Mary supplied Jesus with was a body. Amen. God, amen, planted the seed. Yes. Are y'all hearing God? The seed was the word of God. Amen. And so she had to supply him with a body. However, had not the Holy Spirit overshadowed her, that body that she supplied would have been just like us. It would have been sinful. So the Holy Spirit overshadowed that body and did what? What was, the, what was he doing to it? What was this, what's the term? Circumcision. circumcision. Exactly. He circumcised that flesh. That body that Jesus was, that was going to be called Jesus had to be circumcised. So that, when that child came forth, that child was not born in sin. That's why the scripture said that he came forth in the likeness of sinful flesh. In the likeness of it. He, it was not sinful. Now what is he saying here also? He's saying that because that body that Jesus was in was circumcised, in it was no motions of sin. In it, <clears throat> in it was no law of sin and death. Why? Because the Holy Ghost was in it. And if you look in Romans 8 and 1, it says, it, when the Holy Ghost is there, it says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> for, the, for the law of the spirit of life has made us free from the law of sin and death so by the holy ghost being in that body called jesus the law of life was working in the members Amen. now what does that mean that means that jesus never craved sin Amen. he never craved it like we do we like we did before salvation our body craved sin. There was something working in us called evil concupiscence. Are you hearing God? It was working in our members. The motions of sin was working in our members. Are you work, working with me? But because now, because the Holy Ghost was in this flesh, there was no motions of sin working in Jesus' members. He never desired to sin. The flesh did not desire sin. Are you hearing God? The flesh did not desire sin. So now, <clears throat> the Bible says this. It says Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, right? He was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So if this body does not desire sin, does not have a craving for sin, no motions of sin working in it, no law of sin and death in it, how could he be tempted? How could, what, what, what was, the, what was this, this temptation thing then? Because see, somebody will go right there, well, if he didn't desire sin, he's not like us. He has an advantage. Well, when he was led into the willingness to be tempted, what was tempted? What was the devil? What, what? Here Jesus was, had fasted for 40 days and nights, so he was hungry. Glory to God. And the devil thought to come at him at his weakest point because he was hungry. He said, turn these, bread, turn these stones to bread. Jesus said, it's written. Jump off this mountain. Don't tempt God. He always had, it's written. It's, he'd always send the devil back to the scripture, Right? So what was he communicating with? If the body didn't crave sin, if the body didn't have a propensity to sin, if the body that he was in could not sin, what was the devil communicating with? Who? The soul. Somebody said, Jesus had a soul? Yeah. He said in the psalm, God promised him that he wouldn't leave his what? 
soul where? In hell. He promised him. So his soul went to hell to pay the penalty for our soul. The Holy Ghost that was in that body went back to the Father. I'm, I'm, I'm. Amen. The Holy Ghost that was in that body went back to the Father. Remember he said he gave up the ghost. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. But his soul plummeted where? Into hell. So when Jesus was out there being tempted, the devil was talking to his soul. Which was in the Holy Ghost. His soul was in the Holy Ghost just like our soul is in the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. His soul was in the Holy Ghost just as our soul is in the Holy Ghost. And so what did his soul say? It's written. It's written. It's written. Every time the enemy offered him something, he said, it's written. So the soul was responding. Are you hearing God? The soul was responding to the offers of the devil. Right? And the soul decided. The soul decided it's not going to disobey God. It's, the soul is the one that made the decision, I'm not going to disobey God. Hallelujah. The soul says, it's written. It's written. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So it was the soul. Are you hearing God? So is that not like we are now? The soul made a decision. I'm going to obey God. I don't care how hungry this flesh is. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to feed this flesh. I'm going to obey God. But now this is what I want you to see. There was not one time in that whole temptation where the flesh wanted to sin. There was not one. You don't read anything with the flesh. Oh, Jesus had to have a thought war and trying to bring, the, you know, bring his body under. No, Jesus had a resolve. I'm going to obey God. Regardless of what the enemy offers me, I don't care when he offers it, I'm going to obey God. When Peter said to him, said, no, no, Lord, let it be far from thee. He said, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me. That's the soul responding. I got to take this body to the cross. I've got to take this body to the cross. I've got, yes, I'm going to feel every pain, every, every lash, the plucking of it, the beard. I'm going to feel all of that. The soul feels all of that. Did not we learn, glory to God, that it's the soul that hurts? Mm -hmm. The soul hurts when the flesh hurt, the soul hurt. Yeah. Are you hearing God? Because they're, they're, that's its body. Amen. And so he says, I'm going to feel all that, but I was told by my daddy to take this body to the cross, and that's where I'm going. Are you, are you hearing God? Even, and this is something we have to learn, Jesus didn't give in to vanity. There were times when he said, well, who do men say that I am? Well, they say you this, they say you that, da, 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 da. Glory to God. He said, who do you say I am? You're the son of God. He said, don't tell anybody that. He didn't boast in himself. Why? Because the scriptures say he didn't come to make a reputation for himself. He came to proclaim God. He came to let the world know who God was. Are you hearing God? And we need to learn that. We need to stop trying to make a reputation for ourselves. Amen. Jesus came lowly. Lowly in, in spirit. His spirit. A lowliness of spirit. Are you hearing God? He came in a lowliness of spirit. So now here this man, though, this is where I was trying to get. This man is in the garden praying to his father. Can you kneel down at this? Here my Jesus is praying to his father. Thank God for youth. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm just sitting here, standing here thinking I get down there, I may not get up. <laughs> Jesus, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So now he's praying. He's in the garden praying to his father. Said, Father, give me. The glory that I had with you. What is he saying? I mean, this is Jesus we're talking about here. The son of God. But he said, I had something when I was with you. I don't have now. Because I am confined to this body. I'm confined to this body. You've assigned me 
to this body. But I want you to give me the glory that I had with you. And then when you do that, when you do that, when you give me the glory that I had with you, what was that glory? He's going to be an omnipresent spirit. Hallelujah. He's going to be an omnipresent spirit. He's going to be like he was before the world was. He's going to be everywhere. He's going to have no restrictions. He's not going to be confined to one body. He's going to be a spirit called the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing God? Spirit of Christ. I'm going to be a spirit. I'm going to be a spirit so that I can be wherever I need to be. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing God? So hear this man. Now notice what he said. So give me that glory. In other words, I want to go back to being part of the God, that, 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 that invisible spirit. I want to go back to being that invisible spirit. Watch this. He even told his disciples, he said, he said, if I don't go back to heaven, the comforter can't come. So the comforter was Christ coming back in the form of the spirit. Is that right? So that's the glory that God gave him to come back as the spirit, as the spirit of Christ. That's his glory. And he said, now, when you do that, when you give me that glory, I want those that you give me to be where I am. Oh, wow. I want them to be where I am. So wherever I'm at, I want them to be there too. Why? Because I want them to behold my glory. I want them to behold my glory. Now, look at this verse 2. What does verse 2 say? Sam, you got a, 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 a microphone there? Read uh, 17 and 2, St. John. Seventeen and two. What does it say? Uh huh. Can we turn on Sam's mic, please? Can we turn on Sam's mic, please? Saint John seventeen and two. Uh mm huh. -hmm. And thou hast given him power over all flesh. Uh oh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Now, this is important. We didn't see this before. But this, this, is, this, is, this is so important. This is so important. Okay. Um, come here, Robinson. Come. Come on, young man. Right there in front of Robinson. You. No, you. You, sir. Yes, sir. Come. Yes. What's his name? Oh, that's, oh, Dr. Flowers. Praise you, Jesus. I'm sorry. Come on, Doc. Praise you, Jesus. Come on, work with Doc today. Praise you, Jesus. I don't know why I didn't know that. Glory to God. If you don't look like, oh, Jesus. Come on, Flowers. There you go. They look like little miniature Dexters. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Come, come, Anesta. Praise you, Jesus. You got to get a woman in this. Praise you, Jesus. Okay, guys, come right, come, come right around here. Just, just form me like a half moon circle right here or something. You know, just, to, yeah, kind of come around this way. Yeah, okay, that's good. Now, here Jesus is. He's praying. He says, give me the glory that I had for the world was. That glory was the spirit, that invisible spirit. Remember when he said to Nicodemus, he said, the kingdom comes without observation. Amen. That means it's coming like the wind. It's coming. You don't know. Amen. You, you can't see it, but you know it's there. Amen. And so now here Jesus is praying. Say, I want the glory that I had with you before the world was. However, after you give me that glory, I want all of those that you have given me, I want them to be with me where I am. Hallelujah. So that they can behold my glory. What does that mean? That means that when I come back, I'm coming back as a spirit. And as a spirit, I'm going to get in this body. I'm going to get in this body right here. I'm going to get in this body. And I'm going to get in this body. And I'm going to get in this body, because these are the people you gave me. 
I'm going to get in this body, right? Now, Robinson cried out, Lord, save me. Then his soul cried for salvation. He said, now, okay, when I'm in these bodies, now, notice what he says here. Don't, don't, help me, Holy Spirit. Don't, don't overlook this. He said, as thou has given me power over all flesh. What does that got to do with the cost of eggs? I mean, what does that have to do with anything here? Notice what, what does it have to do with the price of cheese? Okay, praise you, Jesus. All right, read that verse again. John 17 and 2. Mm -hmm. And thou hast given him power. Though, as thou has given him, as thou, sorry, as thou hast given him power mm -hmm. over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Now read the first verse. These words speak Jesus, and lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All righty, he lift up his eyes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. John 17 and 1. <laughs> These words speak Jesus mm -hmm. and lifted up his eyes yes. to heaven and said, uh -huh. Father, the hour is come. Uh -huh. Glorify thy son, uh -huh. that thy son also may glorify thee as thou has given him power over all flesh flesh now wow notice what he's saying here glorify me with your own self which is the holy ghost that's god right then he goes and he starts talking about you've given me power over all flesh what is he saying glory to god he's saying i can get in this body and I got power over it. I got power. Once I get in this body, this body is different. This body, once I get in here, this body is going to be just like my body is now. There will be no more motions of sin. There will be no more evil concupiscence. There will be no more law of sin and death working in it. There will be no more craving for sin. There will be no more lust of the flesh. In this body. Once I get in this body, this body will want to do nothing but bring forth fruit unto righteousness. Once I get into this body, these bodies that you have given me, once I get in here, glory to God, look at this. Jesus is saying, if I'm in this body, this body will crave holiness. If I'm in this body, you have given me power over all flesh. Amen. Did not Jesus say <clears> to <throat> the Pharisees, he said, you're of your father the devil. And it's his lust you will do. Well, if the devil could live in these bodies and create lust in the members, Jesus is saying, I'm going to get in this body. And I'm going to create righteousness in the members. Come on. Are you hearing God? I'm going to get in this body. Step over here some guys. You guys. So I can see them over there. I'm going to get in this body. And once I'm in this body, it will never crave sin again. I have power over all flesh. Good God Almighty. Now. Let's take it a little bit further. Let's take it where the devil doesn't want it to go. But I remember in school, in Founders Week last year when God spoke to me and said, say it, say it, say it. First John 3. First John 3.
verse John 3 and 9. First John 3, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus answered and Just lost your coupons. <laughs> First John three and nine says what? Behold. Mm -hmm. First John mm. three verse nine. <laughs> All your coupons gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First. First John three verse nine. Whosoever, whosoever is, is born of God, whoever is born of God, doth not commit sin. He does not what? Commit sin. Why? For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. Okay. All right. Brother Robertson. Um, Jesus. I, I need you to die for me, please. Thank you. <laughs> He's so clean, he just looks like, Lord, I know this woman didn't tell me to get on this floor. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> just, <laughs> he said, Lord, this woman's crazy. <laughs> but, <laughs> Jesus was in the tomb, dead. That body was dead, right? Now, there is a verse in the second psalm that says, This day I've begotten thee again. Hello? Hello? He was born again. Right? Now, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is what? Spirit. So now the soul is born of the spirit because what happened? The spirit, the soul gets back into the spirit again. Remember, the, the, the spirit went to heaven, soul went to hell. Holy Ghost come, God came down to hell and got his son out of hell. So the Holy Ghost came and got Jesus. Jesus gets back into the, the spirit, right? But then now the spirit gets back in the body. So the body was dead, right? Are you with me? So when the spirit gets back in the body, guess what? The body is resurrected. He's been born again. The body is born again. Huh? Replay that? Okay. This is a principle that I want you to not allow the enemy to cause you to lose. Jesus is our example in every aspect of salvation. Everything Jesus did was an example for us. His makeup was an example. Every aspect of his life was an example for us. When Jesus died, went in the grave, and his soul went into hell. The Bible says, at the resurrection, this day have I begotten thee again. He was begotten when he was placed in Mary's womb. Is that right? But after he died, the bringing back to life, the resurrection was another birth. So the man was reborn. Are you hearing God? Why, was he, why did he have to be reborn? <clears throat> Because all of the sins of the world was in this body. Hello. This body died full of sin. Not his own sin, but it took on sin. He that knew no sin did what? Became sin. So now this sinful body, glory to God, the, the, the soul goes and pays the price for the sin. Now it's lawful. To raise this body back up again. Right? 
So Jesus now raises his body. God, the Bible say God raised him from the dead. So now God raising this body from the dead, this is born again. The flesh was born again, too. You got that. Flesh was born again. That was for our, that was, that was, that, that's the same thing that happened with us. So Jesus was born again, and he told Nicodemus, now that which is born is flesh, still flesh. It's still flesh, and it can't inherit the kingdom. Come on, because it's, hello. Are you hearing God? But it's been born again, because it came back from the dead. Are you hearing God? Just as the spirit was born again. We were born again in the spirit. Are you hearing God? So the whole person was born again. Are you working with me? Now, this is where, you, where I don't want you to get confused at. The scriptures say that which is born of the spirit is spirit. The flesh is merely the temple where we live. That's the temple of the being. That's his house. He could have been born again in the spirit and got in any house. God just put us back in the one we had. Because that's how people knew us. Hello? It was convenient to use the same body that we had because that's what people knew. And so when they saw a change in you, they're like, whoa, I know what Ricky used to be. I know how he, he used to be. What is this? Now he can be a witness and tell him, I was there. I know <laughs> this is what happened to me. Are, are you hearing God? So that's why we're still in the same body. But the body was raised from the dead. Therefore, the flesh is now born again. And guess what? It's a new body. It's not our, it's a new man. It's completely new. It's not our new body that we're going to get when, when in the rapture. No, 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 no. That's because that body is incorruptible. Are you hearing God? But we're back in the same body, but it's different though. What's different about it? What's different about this body, this body, with Jesus in it? <clears throat> this is what I want you to see. Once Jesus gets in that body, he's the same in this body as he was in this one. He's done the same thing to that body that God did to this one. He has made sure that his presence in this body gets rid of the spirit of iniquity, gets rid of the motions of sin, gets rid of evil concupiscence, get rid of all desire. Now you tell me, with Jesus in this body testifying that he has power over all flesh, that he has overcome the world, tell me how is this body a body of sin? This body is no longer a body of sin. Tell me how with Jesus Christ being in this body, tell me how could it sin? How? How does this body on its own just decide it wants to sin? The body. Well, you keep blaming the body. You keep saying, Lord, if it wasn't for this body. Oh, if it wasn't for this body. All this lust. Lord, I just, if it wasn't for the way I think. Oh, Lord, the way I think. If you get rid of this mind. Well, this body has the mind of Christ. Forget about the soul. I'm not dealing with the soul now. Let's act as if the soul didn't even get in there. Jesus got in it. Jesus now looks at that and said, this is the word made flesh again. Now, First John said, it cannot sin. Say, this body can't sin. Why can't it sin? Because the seed remains in it. What is he saying when he says it cannot commit sin? He's saying it will never, ever desire to sin. Now, I'm sorry, but you got to be a hussy. You don't know what that is? 
Oh, God, you've been sheltered all your life. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, you got to be a loose woman. And you are trying your best to get Robinson to sin. <laughs> Robinson looking at me like, what? <laughs> You are trying to lure him into sin. Now, I need a little. <laughs> My partner here. Amen. You're going to be Robinson's soul. Okay? You're going to be his soul. Come back up here, Jesus, where you belong. Right in there. Now, this is Robinson's soul right here, right? This body will never desire sin. Romans 6 says, You are a servant to whomever you yield your members. Notice what it says, though. You yield. Whomever you yield. Now, Jesus, now see, Jesus is a gentleman. Jesus said, I bought and paid for this body. I have power over this body. This body will never betray you again like your, your, the old man did. The old man wanted to sin. The old man had evil concupiscence in it. Your body will never have that in it again. It will never betray you, never, ever, because I will remain in it. The seed remaineth in it, so it will never desire sin. Never, 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 on its own. Never, 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 never. No way you're going to come to God and say, well, if it wasn't for this body. He said, my seed was in the flesh. And I have power over all flesh. I have already overcome the world. So what happens then? Jesus is a gentleman. He says, I bought and paid for it. But you must work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You must be proven just like Adam was. He made Adam, put him in the garden, then stuck a tree there. I got to prove you, Adam, that you're worthy. Don't touch it. Don't touch that tree. Don't eat off it. Don't even touch it, Adam, because the day you do, you're going to die. Adam walks around that tree every day, not paying, you know. God said, don't touch it. Now, if Adam walked around that tree every day and didn't touch that tree, don't you know he didn't ever have to touch it? He could have he obeyed God the rest of his days. Amen? For each, forever. He would, he would have lived forever had he obeyed God. Now, but the Lord said this. Now, wait a minute. He says, just as I tried and tested Adam, I'm going to try and test you. I am the owner of this body. This is my body now. It's the body of Christ. However, I'm going to give you the stewardship. I'm going to give you access I'm going to give you access. I'm not going to have you in this bubble where you can't, you, 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 you are forced. You are forced to, to just do whatever I want to do. No, I'm going to keep you with choice. I'm going to give you, I'm going to make you free. I'm not going to do you like the devil did you. The devil had you in bondage. He forced you to, to, to do his bidding. But I'm not going to force you. I'm going to make you free. So now when the temptation comes... When the temptation comes, when this, when this beautiful young lady tries to entice Brother Robinson there, the body does not crave this. But if the soul, if the soul looks at that and says, I want that, I remember what it felt like to engage in fornication. I remember what that felt like. This is soul. God didn't take our memory. Come on. The soul says, I want to experience that again. However, 
in order to experience it, I need this body. I need this body. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to usurp some authority here. Since she gave me access to it. And I'm going to... I'm going to take the body of Christ and I'm going to join it. You can put your arm around her. <laughs> I'm going to join the body of Christ to a harlot with Christ being right there. He says, now... He says, now, you become a servant now to whomever you yield your members. You become, if you yield your members to sin, you become the servant of sin. We're working for the devil. And we have taken the members of Christ, his body, and joined his members to a harlot. Did Jesus do that? Did he have a desire to do it? Did the body, was the body craving to do it? No, he did it. The soul did it. The soul decided to disobey God and usurp authority and take God's holy temple and join it to a harlot. Isn't that what the scriptures say? Isn't that what the scriptures say? It said this is the temple of God. And he said, when you do this, you sin against your own body. My God. So now, Ephesians 5, verse 30. Let's prove this again. Step right behind him, so. Come, fellas. Ephesians 5 and uh -huh. 30. Uh-huh. Come over here, fellas. Ephesians 5 and 30, what does it say? For we are members of his body, uh -oh. of his flesh, uh -huh. and of his bones. Okay, now this is what I want you to see. Jesus is saying that when I get in his body, this is mine. These are my bones. These are my limbs. This is my flesh. This is the body of Christ. When I get in this body, these are my bones. This is my flesh. This is the body of Christ. When I get in this body, this is my bone. This is my flesh. This is the body of Christ. When I get in this body, this is my bones. This is my flesh. I have power over all flesh when I'm in it. Right? Now, when Jesus is in all of these bodies here, he says, there's no more male or female, no bond, no free, no Jew, no Greek, but all is who? Christ. All is Christ. What is he saying? Just as we are one spirit, we are one flesh. This is the body of Christ. That's the body of Christ. That's the body of Christ. That's the body of Christ. These are his members. These are his bones. This is his flesh. So when I'm looking at the church, it's one body. One flesh. One flesh. So where's the, where's the room for male and female? Jew, Greek. Jew, Jew Greek, Gentile. Bond free. Rich, poor. Doesn't exist in Christ. We're all one. Every one of these bodies is Christ, one flesh. Then he says, no man hateth his own flesh, but does what? 
nourishes, nourishes it. So what does he say? How is it possible for Kareem to hate Stefan? Steph How can Stefan hate Anesta? That's not normal, because this is the same body. That's just like this hand hating this hand. Come on, it's like my hand hate my leg. So I stomp my toe so my hand takes a, a knife and cut my toe off because it's offended with it. That's why nicotine is so evil, because it divides the body. It stops the, the flow of love in the body. The body is one body. It's one. One, one, one. Not only one spirit, but one flesh. Come on, somebody. That's why it's, it's, it's crazy for me to try to hurt you. I'm hurting my own body. I'm a part of the body of Christ. Are y'all hearing God? Are you hearing God? One flesh. Look at your neighbor and say, we one flesh. We're one spirit. And we're one flesh. We've been born again. Clap your hands and tell him thank you. I don't want to take you any further. We're going to take this bit by bit. Did you learn anything today? Yeah. Okay, good, 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 good. I want us to continue to learn, amen. I want, to, I want us to go through this here bit by bit. And see, if we begin to see the oneness of the body of Christ, we see that oneness, we'll stop, we'll stop hating one another, we'll stop uh, having these uh, dissensions in the body, these isms and schisms, this... God didn't call a woman to do this and God didn't call a woman to do that. There's no male or female in Christ. Amen. It's one body. One body. One body. But did you understand how the body does not commit sin on its own? It doesn't crave sin. You understand that now? So we can't blame the flesh anymore. Right? Right? We cannot blame the flesh anymore because God remedied that. Amen? Praise the Lord. What, what you're saying now, what you're saying to me, what you're saying to us is that when I look at you, I see myself. I'm not seeing anyone different. You know, and, and that is awesome and powerful you know that I went because you have the life of Christ inside of you and I have the life of Christ inside of me that it's, it's a it's a transformation which a father has done that makes us just one amen praise the Lord bless the Lord amen that's that's so real saints and that's why when, I, when, when we look upon one another, the scriptures say, see no man after the flesh. What is he talking about? See nobody the way you saw them before. See them after the spirit of Christ. Don't look upon the flesh and see social economic differences, racial differences, gender differences. He says, don't, don't look upon it and see that anymore. See Christ. When we look upon each other, we see Christ. Amen? Pastor George. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a great clap offering of praise. It was a, such a beautiful thing to be in the house of the Lord and be fed by the Holy Ghost the way he has today. You know, and as the Holy Ghost used Dr. Close, you know, to bring the, the message itself to a close, I just wondered and I look at the body, you know, and we're all one. And the reality is that if we are not walking inside of holiness, we need to straighten up now. This is the message that is going to take us in. As Doc said at the start, the Holy Spirit said through her, you know, if we don't embrace this message, we're not going to make it in. You know, so my burden or, or what's on my heart is that if we need to just come and declare and commit and surrender and trust like we did. When Doc talked about Adam walking around that tree every day and know that he, he shouldn't touch it. I remember when we just got saved, when we just got the Holy Ghost. We walked for weeks and months without sinning. We did. 
but some of us may have fallen back in sin. And if we're there, I want for us to come and to talk to the Lord and to, to just hold on to this message. What a marvelous thing God did at salvation. What a great thing. That thing is just a driving force that will keep you into all of the rest of our walk. Hallelujah. Our understanding of it will keep us there. So my burden, and of course there are those who might not have the Holy Ghost and come as well, but my burden is for the, the body we are hearing, but we feel like we're struggling. We know we have the Holy Ghost, but we've not let go on to God. Come. You know how I feel God moving. This is just a season that God has given us almost every Sunday over the past two years. The Lord has given us an opportunity to make things right with him. Now for me, that's a privilege. You know, that may not continue all the time because God is going to move with some speed in my heart. You know, I feel like God is going to move with some speed with those who have embraced this word. Those who have really become the word and accepted that we've become the word and remain inside of God. So we're going to just open the altar for those who need to come and say, God, I see you now. I see you better. God, I, I'm just laying down everything to you. I don't care what is going to happen in the relationship. I don't care what is going to happen on the job. I don't care. I'm just giving you all my heart. I'm giving it back to you. Because I don't want any of us to get left behind. You know, we must be whole. It's a mandate. It's not an option. You know, yes, the message said that having the Holy Ghost, you have a choice because you have a free will. But the reality, what God is saying, this is mandated of me by you for you to do this. Be holy. Be perfect. That's how I've made you. So we are opening the altar, saints. If you think or you know you need to talk to your father, come. Please come. And don't be ashamed. Don't watch any face. Because all of that don't count. That don't make any sense at all. You know? Because what you'd be doing is just looking at your own flesh. And the, the, the preacher said, see no man after the flesh. Don't even look at your flesh after the flesh. If you need to talk to your daddy, come and let us talk together. Those of you who may still be viewing online this is just a serious time where the lord the lord just wants us to get it right the lord wants us to walk inside of holiness the lord wants us to agree with him so if you have a place that you can fall down and let your soul talk to the lord remove the distraction it will just be such a beautiful thing that we'll be on one accord and we'll see you next time hallelujah Saints, it's really a serious time. We have to be holy. We are called to holiness. We were made holy. And God is not going to accept anything less. Now you may be listening and the message sounds interesting and you're not saved. Salvation. Jesus died for the entire world. You see, for God so loved the world that he sent Jesus and that passion, his love for us sent him all the way he didn't sin and so if you need Jesus today come as well come to the altar come to the altar and let us talk to God together hallelujah the Lord waiting on anybody else? You know if the Lord is waiting on you, come, come to Jesus. Jesus.